So Lamar Jackson's pockets took a big hit this summer. The reigning MVP chose to not participate in the Ravens voluntary program just a year after signing his five year extension worth $260 million. Well, his absence cost him $750,000 workout bonus for not participating in at least 80% of Baltimore's voluntary workouts. So we now bring in CBS sports writer, NFL writer, Tyler Sullivan, as we dive into some of those burning questions around the NFL. And we got to begin things in the AFC North. Lamar and the Ravens, obviously, they're ready to avenge themselves following last year's letdown in that AFC title game. Now, I think you and I both could assume the Ravens org would like to have their franchise quarterback on hand as they are preparing to do so. But that's neither here or there in respect to this conversation. Or is it? Because I want to know, what do you expect this offense to look like in year two under Todd Monken? Yeah, no, I mean, you know, of course, you'd love to have your star quarterback there. But I will say, when you have two MVPs in your back pocket, I think you can take a little bit of time off in the springtime, and especially with the money. I don't, I don't think he's hurting, and, you know, more so than you or I. But looking at the Baltimore Ravens going into 2024 with Todd Monken and Lamar Jackson specifically, you know, I'm looking for them to kind of graduate into that master's degree. You know, if we look at last season with Lamar Jackson as him graduating, you know, traditional college, and he's winning the MVP and he's acing all of his tests. Well, now let's go see him get that master's degree. And, and really what that's going to translate into is postseason success because we've seen it from Lamar Jackson already. I mean, last season alone, he's completing career highs and passing yards, completion percentage. He is really f finding himself in Todd Monken's offense. And the fact that they're now going into year two, there's going to be some familiarity, obviously the same voice in your ear. That's always going to be helpful no matter where you are in your career as a quarterback. But when we look at this offense specifically, Specifically, you have Zay Flowers going into year two. You have a healthy Mark Andrews. And of course, you signed Derrick Henry this offseason in free agency. That is going to create so many problems, in my opinion, specifically in the red zone for defenses trying to stop the Baltimore Ravens. Because obviously, what Derrick Henry can do running the football, Lamar Jackson being a dual threat quarterback, I think that that is what's going to take this team to the next level. But really, it starts in the postseason. It starts in the postseason. But I'm just going to say right now, must be nice. Must be nice not to need an extra $750,000. But let's go ahead and move on because I can stay on that one for a while. And let's go to the stick in the AFC North, rather. Ravens division rival, well, they're dealing with some absences of their own. Two of the Bengals star receivers, receivers have been missing in action. Jamar Chase still chasing a new contract with Cincy. Meanwhile, T. Higgins has yet to sign the franchise tag the Bengals placed on him back in February. Now, we know Higgins has been open about wanting to move on to a new team, but what does their 2024 season outlook look like, especially considering both players holding out until the deal's done? Yeah, it's going to be tricky. In the news today with Justin Jefferson doesn't help things, especially when you see a guy making north of $30 million a season, highest paid non-quarterback in the NFL. Jamar Chase is seeing that and saying, well, you know what? I can probably fetch myself something close to that as well. And, you know, not only Justin Jefferson today, but I look at something like Jalen Waddle that just signed a deal with Miami, the number two, quote unquote, in that offense. And if you're T. Higgins, you're looking at that deal saying, hey, listen, I can make top five wide receiver money on a team that does have have a record-setting wide receiver in, in in Jamar Chase when that happens down the road. So it's going to kind of be a tricky situation here for the Cincinnati Bengals to try to figure out. Obviously, when they are all together, when they are all healthy, they are a Super Bowl contender. We've seen them go to back-to-back -back AFC championships, go to a Super Bowl. You have Joe Burrow under contract. So as long as everybody reports to camp, and the Bengals do have a knack for bringing these guys in, even though they have these trade requests. I think at Jesse Bates a couple of years ago requested a trade on the franchise tag but still played out that season I wonder if that will happen here with T Higgins but ultimately you're going to look at this ownership group and they're going to have to hand out the bag and if not you're kind of hurting yourself in the immediate here specifically with T Higgins if you can't come to terms on a deal and you have to force your hand and possibly trade him before the start of the season well that's going to hurt your Super Bowl hopes yeah a lot of bags being handed out but then there's still like you mentioned some wide receivers that are like hey now you need to pay up seeing some of these deals get done well a team that we are also talking about that you just mentioned Minnesota Vikings they have one less thing to worry about now that they have their star wide out locked in through 2028 signing Justin Jefferson to that four year 140 million extension earlier today so the Vikings they now have their quarterback wide receiver tandem of the future locked in with Jefferson and rookie quarterback JJ McCarthy so now I want to ask you what's your outlook on Minnesota's offense considering we know what Justin Jefferson brings to the table they add running back Aaron Jones and now 
that rookie at quarterback. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned all the offseason additions, and, and this is one of the reasons why I looked at J.J. McCarthy and said he was one of the true winners of the NFL draft because, in my estimation, he landed in the best possible spot for a rookie quarterback. We talk all the time about fit, about chemistry, about situations in terms of what can make or break these young quarterbacks and whether or not you land in the right spot at the right time, and I kind of feel like this is it for him. I think that this is a situation where he can be not asked to do too much because all he has to to do is put the ball in the hands of his playmakers. We're obviously talking about Justin Jefferson getting paid today, but he's now in an offense with TJ Hawkinson, one of the premier tight ends in the NFL. You mentioned Aaron Jones, who they signed this offseason, one of the more you know versatile pass catching, in between the tackles type of running backs that we have in the NFL. Jordan Addison, a first round pick in his own right. And so you look at that and you say, man, could this be Houston 2.0 in 2024? Obviously, I, I don't expect J.J. McCarthy to have the heights that C.J. Stroud had, but the cast around him really makes it an attractive team to say, hey, maybe they could push for a wild card spot in the NFC. I think everybody's kind of chasing that that kind of plan that the Texans kind of laid out, bringing in C.J. Stroud and just watching this franchise turn around within a single season, going to the playoffs and winning a playoff game. I mean, they kind of made the recipe, but I think it's going to be a hard thing to chase two new rookies at quarterback in the north but meanwhile Detroit well they went from the hunters to the hunted last season they're getting their first playoff win in 32 years and being less than a quarter away if we're going to be honest from making their first Super Bowl appearance in franchise history and they're going to obviously be looking to pick up where they left off but now I'm going to ask you what is the burning question that you have for the Lions on the heels of their historic 2023 campaign yeah, it was a heck of a year, and, you know, the, the one thing that was holding them back, at least during the regular season, was the secondary, in my estimation, you know, specifically the corner spots. And don't take my word for it, the team went out this offseason and made it a point to upgrade at that position, bringing Carlton Davis from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, using their top pick and Terry and Arnold at the corner spot. To me, that is an immense addition. The question now is, how quickly can those guys get on the same page, specifically with Arnold? Can he be? a starting caliber cornerback in the NFL on day one, or at least close to it. To me, that is going to be the difference here for this team because all the cast of characters are back. There is continuity. Obviously, they even bring back you know, Brian Johnson, their offensive coordinator, to continue leading that offense. Did not go for head coaching opportunities. So all the recipe is there for them to build off of the 2023 season into 2024 and push for that elusive Super Bowl. But to me, it's the secondary. They gave up the six most passing yards in the NFL a season ago. But now if you bring in these these young corners and Carlton Davis has won a Super Bowl before in Tampa Bay, if he can kind of be that steward for this young core in the secondary, I think that could help them take the leap. I feel like the Lions are one of those teams when you look at their offseason moves, did a lot even though they lost some pieces, I feel like everywhere they lost a piece, they managed to upgrade at that position, looking to really take that next step and challenge for that NFC title. And so far it looks like they're doing all of the right things. Tyler, I'm ready for season. Appreciate you stopping by. <laughs> well, we just talked about the Lions looking to build off of that campaign. Well, they have the fifth best odds to win Super Bowl 58 at plus 1300 behind the 49ers, Chiefs, Ravens and Bengals. Then it's the Bills, Eagles, Cowboys, Texans and Packers who round out the top 10 best odds to be crowned next February.